In this lesson on functions and inverses, we're going to have a look at typical exam questions. Example 1. Given the function hx is equal to a quarter to the power of x, our first question, determine the equation of h to the power of minus 1. We know that h to the power of minus 1 is the notation for inverse, and that means that we will start off taking our original given equation, and swapping around the x and the y in this equation. Next up, we need to rewrite it in the standard form y is equal to, and to do that, we will write it as a log. So it will be log x base a quarter. And that means that the equation of h to the power of minus 1 will be log x base a quarter. Or you could have chosen to immediately write down the answer if you know that the inverse of an exponential graph is always a log graph. Question B. If fx is the reflection of h around the y-axis, determine the value of a. This is a bit of revision of grade 10 and 11 work, and you need to know that reflection around the y-axis means that the sign of x will change. So if x's sign will change in the equation that we have at the moment, we will have y is equal to a quarter to the power of minus x. And to get rid of that negative exponent, we can rewrite this as 4 to the power of x. And this means that the value of a is 4. Question C. Sketch the graphs of f, h, and h to the power of minus 1 on the same system of axes. When you have to draw graphs, it's important to know the form of each graph. So if we start with hx, this is a quarter to the power of x, which will be a decreasing exponential graph, and it will cut the y-axis at 0, 1. And then you can add any coordinate on this graph. It's always important to show at least two coordinates on any graph. And I'm going to choose to substitute minus 1 into my equation, and then the y-value will be 4. And then before I go and draw the inverse, I'm going to add the line y is equal to x. Because h will be reflected around this line to draw the inverse. And therefore, the inverse will be a decreasing log graph. And this log graph will intersect the original function on the line y is equal to x. This graph will now have an x-intercept at 1, 0 because the coordinates of the original function simply swap around, and then the coordinate minus 1, 4 will also swap around, and on our inverse we will have the coordinate 4, minus 1. Next we need to go and draw function f, which is the reflection of the original graph around the y-axis, and therefore an increasing exponential graph. This exponential graph will also go through the coordinate 0, 1 on the y-axis, and the coordinate minus 1, 4 also reflects around the y-axis and becomes 4, 1. Example 2. Given the function gx is equal to minus 2x squared with x big or equal to 0, first question, determine the equation of the inverse of g. So once again, we know that if we need to determine the inverse, we start off by swapping around x and y in the equation. And then we need to get the y alone. So we'll start off by dividing the x by minus 2 and then taking the square root of that. And now we need to realize that we were given a restriction right at the beginning, x big or equal to 0. This means that instead of the full parabola, we now only have the positive x value, so only the right-hand half. And this means for the inverse, this will now swap around and the y values will be big or equal to zero. So when you write down your final equation, it is important to make the choice between the positive and the negative square root. And here we'll only have the positive square root. Question B. Sketch the graphs of g and its inverse on the same system of axes. Function g is only the positive half of our parabola. And now we need to add two coordinates on this. We already know that it intersects the x and y axis at 0. And then I'm going to substitute 1 into x place to get another coordinate. 
and the y value that goes with that will then be minus 2. Next, to draw the inverse, I'm going to start off adding the line y is equal to x, and this is the line around which I will then reflect the function I've drawn. And if I take the coordinate that I have and swap around x and y, I will have the coordinate minus 2, 1, which will then be on my inverse graph. Question C. Give the range of the inverse. And here we know that the range or the y values of this inverse graph are all the positive y values. So we can write that down as y is bigger or equal to 0. And we need to mention that it's all the real values bigger or equal to 0. Question D. Is the inverse a function? And motivate your answer. So I'm firstly going to remind you that function means for every x value there's only one y value and for this we use the vertical line test and if you draw a vertical line over this graph and it only intersects the graph once at a time it is a function. So here we can answer yes this is a function and our reason for every x value there's only one y value.